Good morning, Fosto. It's Pam, Stitching Between the Lines. Uh, today is November 15th, 2021. It's a Monday morning and um, snow flurries are predicted. So that's not too bad all the way to November 15th. Tomorrow's my son's birthday. Um, he'll be 29. Holy cow. I My daughter's 30. I can almost not say um, <laughs> my kids are in their 20s. Almost. I have one more that's a number of years younger. Um, but still, when I could group them all in their 20s. But anyway, happy birthday to my son, who, like I said, will be 29. He was born like two weeks before my 29th birthday. So I was kind of get a kick out of it when the kids turned the same age that I was when they were born. So my daughter has a few years to go. <laughs> so my youngest daughter. Um, anyhow, it's been a busy, busy few days, uh, weeks, whatever, a couple weeks. Um, I'm here for like a mid-month update. I tend to do uh, monthly, kind of, because my projects sort of are a month. I try to commit a month to a project. Um, I have a little trouble focusing. <laughs> I don't know. No excuses. I have no idea. Except there's just a lot to think about this time of year. I changed the quilt. I'm not really decorating for Christmas yet, but I wanted to put the pumpkin quilt over the banister of the loft that, so that it shows into the dining room and is there for Thanksgiving. So here is a quilt you maybe never saw. It's called Hometown Christmas. I got the pattern out because I knew there'd be questions. I got the pattern out and uh, don't know where it is. Well, heck, I got it out. Hang on, look at the quilt for a minute. It was uh, over on my cutting table. Hometown Christmas Quilt by Sweetwater. And I bought it when it first came out, brand new at a quilt store I happened to go to. And so it uses a jelly roll. I got the jelly roll that was used in the model. Oh, a layer cake. It was a layer cake. I'm reading the back. And then I promptly made it like right away. So it uses um, some piecing, not a lot, piecing mostly in just the borders of each thing. Some embroidery, applique and embroidery. So I bought it. There was a brand new quilt store in the same plaza where my cross stitch store is where I get my framing done. And we went there, friends and I. So this might have been my first visit there. And then it wasn't long after it, I went to um, a quilt retreat, the one that I spoke about last video, where it's held just a mile from where I used to live. At that time, I lived there. And I took this along, and I don't even know how many um, blocks I managed to finish. Quite a few. It was fun. It was easy. Uh, and again, hometown Christmas quilt. I know there's always questions, so I'm trying to be good and vigilant about, oh, look, we can see what I paid for it. <gasps> a, not a cheap pattern, but any pattern that involves a lot of little patterns, especially when there's applique, um, is not an inexpensive pattern. So no idea if it's still available. That, Google it. You can Google it as well as I can Google it. Um, so that's, anyway, what is new behind me? Uh, I don't know that I've hung this quilt yet since we moved. I don't have as many places to hang quilts. So this tends to be the spot or over the banisters in the loft that sh so they hang down and show downstairs, you know, the downstairs. Um, anyway, there. That's what I have for that. Uh, what else? What else? I have some things. I have some things to show. I didn't bring over with me... I showed the quilt pattern. Yeah, sorry. Look again. Everything's so close. It's just, I see it. I know it's there. I'm just going to go run and get it. I showed you this pattern last time. Uh, winter at Sugar Hill. Praiseworthy stitch. I fell in love with the thing. Decided at some point I would choose just which one of the praiseworthy stitch Christmassy winter village scenes I liked the best and order that. So I ordered it and then I started the process of um, putting together the supplies 
and I went to, um, I'm, I know I'm fortunate. I've mentioned this before. I have several LNSs. I went to uh, hobby house. What is their, what is their full on proper name? Needle art crafts, hobby house. It's the one that, um, everybody raves about lately. It's fairly new. Um, I believe, I believe, I meant, I know I mentioned this before. I believe they had an online presence before they opened their brick and mortar. It's a little log cabin style looking building in uh, Pittsford, New York. And it's only maybe three miles from my other LNS, the where I get my framing done. So I always go there first to my tried and true, been in business for 30 plus years, LNS and see what I can get there before I then go to, to Hobby House. Um, just because I'm feeling some loyalty. Needleworks, Hobby House Needleworks. I feel a little bit of loyalty to the store that, um, you know, is it a, a, a brick and mortar, doesn't have a real internet presence because, you know, there wasn't internet when she started. And anyway, she, her framing is fabulous. So anyhow, I was lucky enough fortunate enough timing timing i don't want to consider myself lucky because i don't know luck doesn't have anything to do with it i got a piece of mirage the picture this plus fabric mirage which is used in is the called for fabric i tend to like to skip around and try my own fabrics and i've done something before i'm pretty sure on mirage i'm pretty sure my mirage was a little pur more purple and a piece I did before and it was horrible I hated working on it but picture this plus mirage in 28 count is what I got because 28 count is what I like 32 count kind of in this particular brand because it gets so plump I think in the process of over dyeing it that third one thread isn't quite enough two threads is very bulky blah 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 i've said it before people have said it before whatever so they had a quarter yard cut and so at 28 count there is no room for error for me to find the middle <clears throat> and if you've been around for a while you know that sometimes a lot of times i have uh, i'm a little bit center challenged it's not like i don't know how to do it i'm just a little bit sloppy about doing it this time there must be vigilance because that I will be left with two inches on in the width. So anyway, I'm talking as if I'm going to start this next week. Anything is possible, especially when you start investing this kind of money. So I went to two stores so far to get all the flosses. The pattern was out of its package. Look at all that floss. It's not even organized. It takes 10 skeins skeins of um snowflake and three skeins of icicle and after looking at the floss and stuff i just decided i really wanted it the palette the way it, the color of it especially the snowflake or the icicle has just a tiny little hint of blue like really cold winter snowy look um let me see what the snowflake looks like. I have 10 skeins in here. You'd think I could find it. It's not terribly variegated, uh, but I don't know. I just, I felt some sort of loyalty to use what's called for. I don't know why. I don't know. I just did. So, so far, two stores to get the floss, and I still am not done. I ordered on um, the Silver Needle, I ordered an embellishment pack it's not really called an embellishment pack but it is a pack that's just the um uh, blending filaments and the beads which also are in here there's some mill hill beads and there's some krynik and i ordered the rest of the flosses i needed and i placed the order and i got a notification that it shipped and the charge i was charged was less than what i ordered and so nobody has said exactly what's missing out of that order. And if I do the math, then I'm off by, I don't know what, the shipping. I don't know. I, I could go back and piece it all together. I'm an accountant. I could do that. I just haven't. Uh, so I don't know what's missing, but I feel like it's liable to be that 
package the beads and crinex sort of thing which is odd silver needle doesn't usually let you order things that aren't i keep hearing a noise over there that aren't in stock so i don't really know what happened there and there was apparently no method for notifying me so i don't know what's going on but i don't think i'd be ready for the crinex or the beads for a very long time this is huge. So, I did that shopping. That was the shopping portion <laughs> of the day. Um, I, in November, finished the next square of Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. As you may recall, I am trying to finish this thing by the end of the year. I thought maybe I could finish it by the time framing was done that I took in a few weeks back, but the framing was done, which is why I was at the store. Was the framing was done and I had some, a couple, uh, one, each of my daughters brought a piece that I was getting framed for them for Christmas. So I wasn't lingering. I wasn't leaving all that framing there. Uh, but anyhow, Farms of Hawk Run Hollow. This is technically block number one. For me, it's block number like 11. I have the one last one to do. It will be a forced march because I'm over it. You know how it is. It happens. So block, 11, block one is what has the words in it. Ah hawk run farm i felt like if you were looking at this in 50 years and i'm you know long gone and somebody's put it in the goodwill i don't know they'd be looking all over on google for who owned hawk run farm i have no idea we live in the farming community farming part of new york in general um so anyway i didn't care for the i don't know so i went left the words out and I went to this block down here and um, did restitch the corn oops I'm dropping it in there and I like it much better <coughs> excuse me everything else is the same everything else is called for so I was really, 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 really hoping that the last block didn't have like a mega section <clears throat> of solid stitching, but I was wrong. It has. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. It has this. So this is where I'll start. Get that done in December. Maybe towards the end of November. I don't know. <laughs> Not in a hot hurry to start to work on it again. <clears throat> but... I am trying, 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 trying to get this guy done. I, you know, as you see, I'm kidding up some enormous pieces. And those are the pieces that just really call me. I just wish I was stitching on them. And I still have uh, several whips that I consider in the large section, you know, under the large category. So getting one done. This is one of my oldest whips, I think. I'll have to check the dates on that and all that stuff. Um, I'll have to check the fabric. It's 40 count. Pretty sure it's a picture this plus. I just don't know the color. And then I am also plodding away at this, which was an impromptu start, an accidental start, I don't know, in um, October. And I showed you last time I had four of them done. And I finished the fifth. Which I should have had out. I don't know. I guess I was thinking more about making sure I picked up the one that wasn't done yet. Ghosts and Goblins. Uh, I hate. I hated working on this one. I just the letters just wore me out. They're thick. The letters are very thick. So Ghosts and Goblins. This is something I really don't like. When I did the Boo Cats, I didn't put these in I don't like it there's one on the I mean this is for me to actually have stitched the bat that was big but because the ghost is holding like a bat balloon kind of thing I thought that was cute so I did it but it's not getting a bow 
I failed the bird the bird feeder. I'm watching the blue jay just landed on it. He's throwing seed everywhere. No wonder it's such a mess and it's gone in no time. So I finished this. I'm doing this on uh, a piece of Monaco. And I believe it is called tea dyed. Not tea dyed like me physically tea dyeing it. That's its name. Tea dyed Monaco. And I'm just, it's, I usually like working on this sort of thick, subtle, supple fabric. I just am not feeling it. I have trouble manipulating the needle. And then I end up doing, I don't know, it ends up taking me a lot longer. So I'm doing the very, very last one. And it is called... It is called, I don't know, I'm out of order in the book, Halloween Delivery. So it's pumpkins in a cart being pulled by a crow, also with a giant bow that won't be happening. The crow doesn't isn't making me happy, I'm not stitching it yet, but the crow's wing is like long stitches like lots and lots and lots of long straight stitches i don't like it they're not going to lay right forever they're going to be a problem so i haven't worked out how i'm going to handle the wing yet i'm not sure if there's a picture that shows it better in there do you see that and you know i can see right here and now i'm not going to like this string you know like this thing where he's pulling the cart I don't know and it's not like I saved it for last I was just going in order in the book and I got out of order and did this one next which I'm glad I did because this being the largest one I'm glad it's done so hopefully this will only take me a, like two more days these take me personally when they're about the size they take me about three evenings and maybe a little afternoon time this one took four plus some afternoons this one for sure got a little bit of afternoon stitching so those are my two whips and both of them i'd like to have done uh the brenda gervais halloween ones by the end of november hawk run hollow by the end of december <sighs> that one's gonna kill me so when i finish the um, Halloween Brenda Gervais in November I'm going to work on Kringles um, and it's entirely possible I'll pick up some other little Christmas small thing so we'll see there's time there's time to uh, change my mind so the framing that's one of the reasons why we're here is my framing has come back and I didn't show you what I was taking before I took it it just sort of happened I had stitched this back in, let me look at the year. Well, the year on it's 2020. Um, I started, uh, I think, on my birthday in 2019. Pretty sure. And it's a piece you just don't commonly see. It is a Tasha Tudor piece of artwork turned cross stitch. It's so cute. I just loved it. I kept, it's Christmas Heralds, and when I was working on it, I kept calling it the Heralds, like it was the Herald family. And I love it. I finally, I'd had it, I kept thinking I would do some sort of finishing myself, and nothing was coming to me as a possibility. So when I was taking, going with my daughters to the store to get pieces framed for them for Christmas, I grabbed it out of the box and said, here it goes. And the frame is so perfect. It's just, just the right amount of old, gnarly looking. It, this just makes me think of um, Christmas time in like, I don't know, the 1800s. <laughs> I don't know why. It's so stinking cute. And I like things that have three kids, especially when there's a girl, then a boy, and then a little one that can be a girl. This one's a girl. So. There we go. That, I'm ready to hang that right up on a wall spot where I took a Halloween piece down. Um, so that's getting hung. And then I took all of Vons. Let me, sorry. Let me just pick up this plastic because, you know, the cat. I don't need him thinking it's a plaything. 
And then I took Paula Vaughn's July. Holy cow. Look at that. Isn't that something? It is a dark blue frame, which I love. Blue being my favorite color. Dark blue being spot on perfect. Love this. I love how it turned out. Uh, seeing, you know, this was a tough one. This is Paula Vaughn. Anybody who's done them knows. Um, there's a lot of detail. And right off the, you know, here's the first one I ever did. I pick with two quilts with a ton of, of backstitching. And flowers are my least favorite thing to stitch with the backstitching because there's just so much of it. There it is. It makes you think, it makes me think of, um the geranium still life one that I have that needs to finishing. It has the quilt and it has the crock with the geraniums um, needs finishing. So I will hopefully get to that. There's a problem with that one though. So I kind of haven't gone back to it. I think I explained it when I showed it last, but you'll just have to live in suspense. This isn't a, a video about dragging out all my old whips yet. That comes around the first of the year you know, when we do our whip parades. So very, very, very happy. Uh, this is just on a piece of white linen. Maybe even weave. I don't have my glasses on that really show me, but just white, plain white. So yay, thrilled. And then finally, I have an FFO that, um, is you know the one at the kind that uses your creative brain I did I finished this fall tingles the tingles series all in one and I went shopping for something to put it on uh, let's see how much I can get in here this is from Hobby Lobby it makes me think of sort of like a church window a cathedral window just and it's just the metal and I I have to vote this guy myself Still, my favorite, I still really like that ruffle, like the torn um, homespun ruffle. And hey, Robin, this was one of the fat quarters she were given out, given away, <laughs> disposing of recently. Like as soon as I was thinking about what color and went to look at my drawer of homespuns, I'm like, yay, perfect. Uh, I think this is done on ale. I think picture this plus ale. I have not written the facts on the back yet. But I, uh, I used batting. I actually used two layers of batting. And I used um, poster board. It's not super thick. It's not foam core board. Um, my son is a graphic designer. And when he was in high school and college, he had a crap ton of, I don't know, poster board, mat board, mat board. I don't know. And when we moved out of our last house, there was lots of it in his closet that I have kept and uh, I used two pieces of it I, I laced it onto one and then I mount I put another one on the back so you can see it doesn't show all the lacing and then I fed through the pieces some wire you know I had to mark it and I had to poke the holes and get the wire in there so that it's only wired on to here uh, I don't intend to take it off. I don't necessarily have anything else at this point that I would put on here. But I'm especially fond of this. And, and this is another reason why there's a mid-month uh, video is by the end of November, anything that's Halloween will be put away. So this needs to get put away. Didn't get to display it this year, really, but that's fine. So there, that's all the cross stitch and, um, oh no, no, it's not. No, no, sorry. So this past Saturday is when I did my Zoom class with Erica Michaels making the um, strawberry. I've been leading up to this by sh making some strawberries. I did, this is the first one I ever did just to see what it was like. Um, Joy to the world, I don't know its official name. I did a couple buttons on top and some wool, a wool cap on it, and it went well. Um, but I wanted some like I wanted some experience with strawberries before I took the class, and then it was through uh, Needleworkers Delight, and you know we just paid and we got um, a class supply. We got a pattern for homework. 
we got um, a kit for finishing and some wonderful pictures and ideas and how to's for finishing a strawberry so I did the class on Saturday and I had my homework done which was to have the stitching done and then together and with her along with her I FFO'd it so I, it came out so nice one of her things that she, her first of all her patterns if you just buy her patterns are very clear and concise with instructions so it's very easy it's one sewing machine seam if you have a sewing machine and really you could do it by hand uh, I have a sewing machine I'm not doing it by hand uh, to sew up the side and then she recommends in her patterns to put like to take some yarn maybe a length of yarn maybe six inches and then pull the plies apart and cram that down in here because she likes how it makes the point I did not do that on this one this one like she mentioned if you wanted to use walnut shells as your stuffing you could she mentioned though that it makes them very heavy and for her who's packing up you know I don't know hundreds I don't even know how many strawberries she said it makes for a very heavy package I put walnut shells in the bottom of this one it's okay I didn't cram it as full as she did she said she stuffed these suckers full so I used the yarn that came in our finishing kit down here and then I used my what I use is cluster stuff that I bought um I got it like at Joann's I think and then I couldn't find it again so I ended up ordering some from Amazon and I got like a five pound box which when I opened the box it was like <laughs> five pounds is like the size of a bean bag chair so I have been refilling my bag with my cluster stuff for quite a while um, and so you don't have to do that like lofting thing with it because it's really already like little tiny balls and they cling together and it makes stuffing so easy so i packed my guy full like she said and i made my cap she had some fabulous ideas the ribbon and the wool came in our finishing kit and <clears throat> some a pattern to do a little rounded and a leaf and then she gave instructions on how to do these things she calls like a jelly roll thing i don't know i did some of those and i did one of the covered pins like she showed and it came out so stinking cute let me just say it was so stinking cute I cut my ribbon a little different than her pattern so I had another tail and I worked that in there just so my ribbon has like a little more going on cute it's very cute and then today using the knowledge I got I worked on two of the ones that I had done in advance just so I would have a couple ready you know to do after learning so these are the naughty or nice um strawberries i showed these i've showed these that i did them and i on the top of these i have the these snowflake button things several years ago i was at like um the salvation army and there was a package of like three dozen of these different there's different sizes snowflake button things embellishments so that so i have a bunch of those and i have quite a button collection so i finished my tops just like that and then the the wool piece that is appliqued down now these guys when i stuffed these i had purchased in anticipation of strawberry making a bottle of emery this is what you find uh, in for example the tomato pin cushions you would buy like at Joanne fabrics um, good for the needle that kind of thing wherever I bought this which was possibly on Amazon they only had the black the jar to me seemed a little small what is it like four ounces yeah something like that let's read together magnified no I think it's a fraction of an ounce let's just pretend it says four ounces that's quantity and the size appears to be about that it is black I would rather have white but whatever um, these strawberries are lined with um, some kind of oh uh, stabilizer so there, you can use different things there's no rule about the stabilizer really so my bottom about an inch which takes about a tablespoon of this you can see I've done two and it's used 
about that much. I could get six, oh, let me get it more level. I think I could get six or so strawberries out of a jar this size. Um, I like the feel of that so much better down here. And then I stuffed it with the cluster stuff and then uh, attached my top and I love it. It's so cute. I, these are so cute. I'm so glad I had some done because I was just so itching to use my new knowledge on some strawberries. And the only other one I have stitched is the Easter Chick, whatever one it's called. These are all Erica Michaels patterns. Um, so I was going through my button box and I found a big, nice big button that I think would look cute. I just, like I said, I just, two of them in a row was good this morning. Um, I have more I plan to stitch. Um, I couldn't make myself work on the one recently. had the moose on it. I still want to do it. Um, so anyway, that was fun. Oh, and something else. She gave us her look. She gave us in her finishing kit some pieces of wool. And people in the meeting or in the class were asking where they could get scraps of wool. And I did show wh what I had and where I got it. This came from, um, it was a, a scrap bag from um, Lady Dot Creates Etsy shop. And I was looking back to make sure, you know, I gave people information that was still useful and that she had one, I don't know, there was one bag listed of scraps. I don't know how many there were. What caught my eye was that 20 people had it in their cart. But at the same time when I was looking, I saw lots and lots and lots of Etsy shops that will also sell a scrap bag of wool, felted wool. So if anybody was in that class or is wondering where to get a selection of colors, this is one of the ones I cut into this morning. So it's kind of hanging out down there, but this is a good size bag. I'm, I, probably they sell it by weight. This is approximately half a pound. And in this, in her particular thing is her sizes of her wool scraps are about I'd say that's about four by five four by six there's two of them there um, just to give you an idea of what that is I uh, would not hesitate to try ordering scraps a scrap bag from another Etsy uh, shop that does that sells wool related products like applique or rug hooking or whatever now my wool Felted wool doesn't really fray. Wool in itself doesn't necessarily fray, but when you're cutting out like curves, you still might have some woven threads that want to come out. So I actually touched very lightly around the edges. Well, on this guy, I touched each point with a little bit of fray check, and I, I can tell because I know it's there, but it's not, you can't see it. And then on this one, I very, 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 very gently just touched around the edges of the curves uh, because I could just see a little thread hanging this way or a little fiber pinging which way or whatever way. So I did, you know, pull out my fray check, which is, you know, anybody who's cross-stitched a long time, when we learned we weren't supposed to be masking taping our edges, we moved on to fray check. Um, I don't use fray check very often anymore because I have a serger. But every now and then my serger acts like a jerk and um, it, it and I aren't getting along. So my fray check came in handy. Um, I need to, not so much this one, but this one. I feel like my buttons aren't as tight as I'd like them. I might get under the edge of a button or two with a t tiny dot of E6000 or something just to not make those be wiggly. So highly recommend if you ever have the opportunity to, um, first of all, try one of her patterns and use her instructions and just go creatively wild on your tops because, you know, you can. Uh, or to, if you if there's an opportunity to take another class from her to do that. She's included in our packet a lot of photos. She did a PowerPoint of finished items and then we got the photos of those in our package. I'm not I'm not here to promote and try to you know give away her things that we paid for, whatever. You know, it's like kind of like showing the pattern 
Um, these are her ideas that she shared with us and uh, in a class. So I really can't. I mean, if it was on a pattern I bought, I would, but I don't know. I don't know. You know, Google it. See what you see. Um, and then, okay, so that that's really all the cross stitch. So I have book. I have a book to talk about. Fanny Flagg wrote um, Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe. Um, I think that's the I think that's the correct word. Fried Green Tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe, which was a movie. The book came out years ago. I read the book. I've seen the movie more than once. And it's just, it's one of those movies that always stayed with me. And her books, it's interesting. I have loved some of her books, and I have not loved some of her books. Uh, they, a lot of them focus around the same town and possibly cast of characters. Um, so this one was her newest book. She's written quite a few. Here's, the, here's her page of, sorry page of books I liked a Redbird Christmas that was you know uh, it doesn't bring together any of the same characters but if you like a sweet little Christmas story a Redbird Christmas is a nice one I don't think I really cared for the whole town is talking I think I don't know don't let me speculate um I definitely didn't like I don't know. Don't make me say it. Don't make me say what I did or didn't like. One of the things that's fun, though, is I have read all her books, is every now and then when I'm looking for, like, an audio book to listen to, when I sew, uh, John Grisham is my go-to, number one. But her books are read, are fabulous, very enjoyable. So anyway, there's that. But I read, sorry, I'm trying to put the cover back on. I got this one after it came out, and I finally just picked it up to read it. The Wonder Boy of Whistle Stop, which hops back and forth between the era when Fried Green Tomatoes took place and the f current t time, roughly. We see the progression of, well, who the Wonder Boy is, who was a main, roughly main character in the Whistle Stop, the Fried Green Tomatoes book. As, he, as he's grown up, as he's an adult, as his daughter is growing up. So there's a lot of hopping back and forth and kind of keeping up with uh, the people from the town as the Whistle Stop, uh, town of Whistle Stop sort of fizzles out because there's not trains that take people and stop there and, and people stop at the cafe for their lunch and whatever um it was a quick read it kept my attention i i just think maybe if you struggle a little bit with the hopping around of characters which chapter is by or about which character that could be a little unsettling. If you don't remember Fried Green Tomatoes or anything about it or haven't read it or seen the movie, I would say see it and then pick this up or read the book, then pick this up. Um, it's interesting to see where characters went when a book ended, right? So, I don't, you know, that's not like a rave review or anything. It wasn't a bad book. I just think uh, you need some knowledge of fried green tomatoes at the Whistle Stop Cafe to truly enjoy it. That's what I'll say. So, and since I did, since I read it, since I actually have the DVD, I haven't watched it in years, but I very much remember the story. So, there. That's my reading. I did pick up, um, I keep mentioning John Grisham. I've been in a reread John Grisham mode, a couple reasons. First of all, I do like to listen to his audio books. And secondly, I've been to two different library book sales and the library here in town had their book sale <laughs> because, you know, it's COVID and it's, they don't want people in um, the building in a small space looking through books. It was out on the front lawn of the library for four Fridays, every Friday in the month of June. And I didn't go to the first one, but every Friday after that, I found a reason to be in town and just stop and look. But anyway, John Grisham books apparently are very popular around here because they're just, every time I look at the library book sales, there's John Grisham books. 
and I went to, I specifically went to another library, a little small library in our same library system in a little small town just down the road. I went to their book sale and again, so I keep picking up John Grisham books and I keep rereading them. And um, so uh, I read recently, I read, um, uh, I'm gonna have to put the title, The Sycamore Tree. So sorry. It involves, I didn't realize it involves the same lawyer that I have been reading in several of his other books. And I went back and I read the very first ever John Grisham book, which first introduced this lawyer, um, Jake Bergantz. Uh, since he seems to be picking up the thread of that same lawyer in the same town with some of the same characters, I just kind of wanted to reacclimate myself. So Sycamore Road, I Sycamore Tree, I liked, but I like the legal wrangling and juggling and nonsense of whatever's going on because I like that. I worked in the court system for a lot of years. So um, I found it interesting. I don't know that it has the most popular appeal, but it's good if you like John Grisham. I actually got the book out of the library and started reading it and I'm reading along and I thought, I just really miss the person who does the reading in his books. So I went to the library, you know, on my iPad and downloaded the um, audio version and finished it that way. And then he has a new book out and I was listening to a sample of it and I don't know if it's read by two people, but it was a woman reading it. And I thought, uh-oh, I have, nope, <laughs> I'm going to have to have the actual physical book on this one. It, so anyway, uh, it's funny how you get attached to the voice in audiobooks. I did, I read, read, I listened to all of the, um, I can't think who the author is, but the A is for alibi, B is for whatever, like it went through the whole alphabet and then the author died before she got Z done, before she finished Z. And that, I enjoyed those in my sewing room for a long, long time. And then somewhere mid alphabet, it changed who read them. And I thought, oh no, I'm never going to adjust. I did. I'm not really like Sheldon Cooper on the Big Bang Theory that bad, but I remember what it felt like to all of a sudden have somebody different reading. Um, anyway, don't know what's happening with the John Grisham books. So that's all that's going on for the most part. Um, oh, Thanksgiving's rolling right up on us. My youngest daughter got a kitten who's very sweet. Uh, we will be trying... Uh, this coming weekend, a little introduction with Cooper, who's a little territorial and very, 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 very aggressive when there's an outside cat, when he sees a cat walk by. Now, if he met that cat in person, we don't really know what he would do and what he would do if he meets a kitten. So this is a little wee guy. He's little, he's so sweet, so cute. He's all legs and feet and ears. He's going to be a big cat, tall, big cat. Um, so anyway, he's going to make an appearance and we'll see on a sh just a little quick, you know, maybe two hours, him in the house. We'll see what happens so we can anticipate maybe if there will be a kitten here for Thanksgiving or what exactly we'll do. We can shut the basement door. There's living space. The basement and the bedrooms are downstairs. We can shut that and he can be down there. Cooper can stay up here and be a grumpy old man that needs to be the case kitten has claws cooper does not so <laughs> there's some defense the kitten has some defense um anyway so that's coming up that'll be fun uh what else i have some more ffo plans you know it takes me forever it takes me forever i will start on something and then it needs to lay around for a while because i just can't apparently work on something like that continuously from beginning to end i have to putter around about it i don't know anyway there we go just kind of like how i'm rambling now so anyhow i hope everybody has a good week i hope everybody's in the united states who celebrates thanksgiving is uh gearing up for that it's always a fun day i love to watch the parade that's my favorite part. <laughs> so, have a good one. Bye.